Hi YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here are my picks for UFC 129, St. Pierre vs. Shields. Now, before I get things rolling, please, you guys have asked for it, here we go. I finally did get a Twitter account, so follow me at twitter.com slash Soldier. I also have a Facebook page. I'll leave all the links to my social networking sites in the bottom in the description below, so feel free to follow me if you please. Now, folks, let's get cracking. Here we go. UFC 129, St. Pierre versus Shields. Of course, this is going to be the first um, UFC card in Ontario. Yes, they did legalize it. I made a video on it last year, and I was really happy about it. And, you know, we get to have MMA in our province now. I'm most likely going to the event, so I'm pretty excited. So let me know if you are going. And, yeah, really can't wait for this one. On one side, you got George St. Pierre, one of the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world and easily the best at 170 you know he's given us no reason over the past few years that he isn't the best and then of course we have jake shields the challenger most decorated challenger gsp's ever faced and probably his biggest threat considering you know we've counted this guy out so many times and you know he's fine <laughs> what can i say um no one wants to see this guy win i guess no one likes his style no one likes his lack of charisma, but a lot of you guys know he's one of my favorite fighters. But let's get cracking with the first fight of the main card, which involves two lightweights in Mark Bocek and Benson Henderson. Alrighty folks, now Mark Bocek versus Benson Henderson. On one side you got Mark Bocek, very strong, very durable, very good submission grappler in 155, and yet he's uh, becoming more well-rounded as a mixed martial artist. Then on the other side, you have Benson Henderson, very exciting fighter, very well-rounded, and, um, you know, has a lot of heart, as you guys saw in the Anthony Pettis fight. Wow, the guy's really a pleasure to watch, and, um, you know, he's just, he weathers the storm, and somehow survives, and unfortunately, he came out on the short end of the stick in the Pettis fight, but the guy's still very dangerous, the guy has a very slick guillotine, his technical striking is pretty good. And, you know, he's a very good wrestler, which is his base. And then Bocek, of course, you know, strong guy, um, developing his wrestling skills. He has the ability to put people on their back now um, and then submit them from there. Of course, his striking is developing too. He's not exactly, you know, K1 or anything, but he's not going to walk into the ring and get, some, and get knocked out in like, you know, 10 seconds. You know, he's not exactly a terrible striker. If you guys did watch a Jim Miller bout, I thought that if Jim Miller got the best of anything, it was a striking. But I'm pretty sure that Mark Wojcik hung with him there. I thought that he controlled the majority of that fight. Uh, and I thought he was the aggressor. So based on uh, cage control and aggression, I thought uh, Mark Wojcik won two of the three rounds. So I did think he got robbed because, of course, Jim Miller won that fight. He made him decision. Now, if... Mark Bocek can do that to one of the best in the world in Jim Miller. I think he should have no problem doing that to Ben Henderson. Ben Henderson is, you know, a scrappy dude, I'll tell you that. You guys have seen his fight against Anthony Pettis and then his previous bouts, like his first bout with Donald Cerrone and Jimmy Varner. Now, of course, he was getting beat by Varner um, on the feet, but eventually he sunk in the guillotine, I believe, in round three, and that put uh, Varner out, and, um, you know, he won the title. But... You know, does Benson Henderson have the ability to finish Mark Bocek? I don't think so. Um, Mark Bocek has a good chin. I don't think he's going to get knocked out by that. Uh, by him, I don't think so. I just don't see it happening. I don't see him on his back either because Bocek's a very strong dude. I think he's going to be hard to take down. And I don't see uh, Benson Henderson using much of his wrestling unless it's defensive. And obviously, I don't see that guillotine happening either. I think Bocek is too smart a grappler to get him caught in one of those stupid positions. However, I did see Anthony Pettis get get Benson Henderson in a lot of precarious positions. Um, he was getting hit a lot. Obviously, Mark Bocek isn't, you know, Anthony Pettis when it comes to striking, but Anthony Pettis was able to get Benson Henderson in a lot of crazy submissions, like that one where he was on top of him for you know, a good three minutes with that rear naked choke. Somehow Benson Henderson did not succumb to that. But if Mark Bocek can sink in the claws for a rear naked choke, his finishing ability is a lot better um, grappling-wise than Anthony Pettis. 
and I'll be sure to see Benson Henderson falling asleep to one of those. So, and I'm going to say that happens. I got Mark Wojcik winning via um, rear naked choke around one. I think that um, this is actually a step up in competition. Besides Anthony Pettis' fight for Benson Henderson, I think Mark Wojcik's a very game opponent, and I do believe he's top 10 because of what he was able to do to Jim Miller. I think not a lot of guys beat him in the world. I just don't think that Benson Henderson will use his um, technical striking uh, and wrestling effectively in this fight. I think those are the things he does hold over Bocek, but I think Bocek, you know, is, like I said, very game, and I think he'll figure out a way to uh, make this his fight and turn this into, into a grappling match where he should beat uh, Benson Henderson because he's the stronger of the two and the fact that, you know, he is, you know, just better ground-wise. So, yes, Mark Bocek, round one, you're naked choke. All right, folks, moving on. we got a light heavyweight bout between Lyoto Machida and Randy Couture. These guys have, like, six titles between them. Kind of scary. Uh, a lot of gold <laughs> uh, these guys have accomplished over the years. It's amazing. Uh, on one side, you got Lyoto Machida, the elusive striker, if you will, very quick, uses very good lateral movement, and he hits like a dump truck. Uh, very good uses of kicks and punches, and he likes, to mix, he likes to mix it up on feet, and he has the ability to take people down with his sumo background, and um, he's just, you know, a quintessential mixed martial artist. Guy has Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the guy obviously has his Shotokan karate base, and, you know, he has awesome training partners with people like Anderson Silva, and then Nagara's at Black House. And, of course, you got uh, Team Quest, Randy Couture. Of course, you know, he merged into his own camp, Extreme Couture, a lot of good people there. He trains with a lot of people there. Help him keep him, help keep him in shape. Guy is still, you know, in better shape than most light heavyweights um, that UFC has. It's kind of scary, especially at 46 years old. Um, he's in better shape than I probably ever will be. And it's just quite amazing. The thing is, is that he's still the same fighter, from, um, which is bad and good in a sense, considering it's good because, you know, he's still able to do what he does, which is like dirty box people along cage or pick people up, drop them, ground pound them. The thing is, is that he hasn't evolved, you know, he hasn't added anything relatively new to his game. And the thing is that, um, I think Lyoto, uh, is expecting the same old Randy Couture and I am as well. And I think that Lyoto has the power and, um, ability to put him away. I don't think this is a very good decision for Randy Couture to take this fight. I think Lyoto Machida does a very good job at gauging dis distances and keeping, um, people at bay. You know, he's not exactly fighting, you know, Shogun Hua here. Uh, this guy is not a great striker in Randy Couture. He's never been known to be. Um, you know, I just don't see how Randy Couture wins this fight. I don't see Leon Machida getting put on his back. And if he is, I think Leon Machida has good enough scrambling ability to get back up on his feet and, um, you know, tee off on Randy Couture from there. But like I said, you know, I just don't see it happening at all. And as long as this thing's on feet, it's only a matter of time before Randy Couture gets knocked out. Uh, because, you know, he's not the greatest striker. He doesn't exactly have the greatest striking defense. I still think he gets hit a lot, as you guys saw in, like, the Brandon Vera fight. If Brandon Vera can hit Randy Couture numerous times, I think that Leo Machida will hit him and hit him a lot harder and find a home for a knockout punch. So I got Leo Machida winning by KO. I got him winning late round one via punches. So, Leo Machida, round one. Alright folks, moving on, we got another light heavyweight bout between Jason Brills and Vladimir Makhachenko. Now, I'm trying to figure out why this fight is on the main card. I feel that guys like Nate Diaz and Rory McDonald should be on the main card in place of this bout. We already have one nice marquee light heavyweight fight in Machida Couture on the main card. These guys aren't exactly exciting, Brills or Makhachenko. They don't exactly have big fan followings. And, you know, I don't see any of these guys in the future becoming anything more than, say, gatekeepers. And Vladimir Matyushenko already is one. I think that Nate Diaz and Rory McDonald have a lot more to offer the 170-pound division than Brills or Matyushenko do for the 205 division. But that's besides the fact. Let's take a look at this fight and uh, see where each other wins. Honestly, they're going to look to do the same thing with each other. You got Jason Brills on one side. You know, very good wrestler, um, very good top control guy, likes to ground pound you, grind out decisions like that. And quite frankly, Matyushenko is the same. If this thing isn't, um, if someone's not, you know, on top of someone ground pounding them, and that's not exactly the most visually appealing thing to watch, this striking between these two is going to be 
horrid. You know, these guys are not strikers. And they're going to feel each other out for, you know, three or four minutes. You know, you better believe that the crowd will be doing. I just think that the more athletic and more explosive guy here will win. And Jason Bros, I think their technique cancels each other out via wrestling, which is their strength. So I got Jason Bros running here via unanimous decision. I think that Matthew Shanko is going to be overwhelmed by his, uh, you know, speed, if you will, and explosiveness. So I got Jason Bros winning 29-28. All right, folks, moving on. We got the co-main event between the UFC featherweight champion, Jose Aldo, and the challenger, Mark Kalmanek. Of course, this is for Jose Aldo's UFC featherweight championship. This one looks sick, guys. I'm a fan of both of these guys. I really want uh, Hominick to win, though, being someone from uh, Southern Ontario. And Mark Hominick's obviously from Southern Ontario. I really hope he wins in front of 55,000 people at the Rogers Center. But I just don't see it happening. I think that Jose Aldo beats him absolutely everywhere. You know, the one thing Hominick might possess over Jose Aldo is his expertise in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Mark Hominick is pretty sick off his back. The thing is that apparently that Jose Aldo is just as sick in submissions as he is striking. And he said he might be even better, which scares me. But from what I've seen on paper, that's where Mark Hominick beats Jose Aldo, if anything. Um, because we've seen Mark Hominick's submission game, and it's not terrible. It's pretty good. Um, I just think that Jose Aldo on the feet is a wrecking ball especially if you can't get it to the ground, which no one has been able to. Um, Mark Hominick is not a wrestler. He's not going to get it to the ground and, you know, ground pound Jose Aldo, TKO him like that. Or Uriah Faber couldn't even do it. You know, Van Velg and Viren can do it. So it makes me think Mark Hominick's going to. In striking, like I said, I already thought, I already think that Jose Aldo is untouchable. The thing is that the guy is not Anderson Silva at 145. It's kind of scary. Um... Mark Hominick, to me, just does not have the criteria to beat him. In the striking, he might possess hand speed over Jose Aldo. So, I'm not sure if he's going to use that effectively. Mark Hominick uses angles really well, uses a good game plan in terms of striking. But the thing is, I just think that the overwhelming physical and Muay Thai ability of Jose Aldo will overwhelm Mark Hominick in this fight. I got Jose Aldo winning this early. I got winning via knockout late round two. It's not that early. But, you know, I think that they feel each other out round one. You know, I think you'll see Jose Aldo, you know, come in, mix it up with combinations, and, uh, you know, throw late kicks, stuff like that. Maybe high roundhouse kicks. Who knows? And I just think it's going to look good on judge the judges' side. So I'm going to give Jose Aldo the first round. And, of course, I think he turns it up in round two. I just think Mark Hominick's never seen a striker like Jose Aldo. So I got him winning Jose Aldo via knees and punches round two. All right, guys, now everyone's favorite, George St. Pierre versus Jake Shields, my favorite. And the welterweight division, of course, is for George St. Pierre's 170-pound title. And wow, George St. Pierre has compiled quite a record as of late, winning like 30 straight rounds. Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, that's... One of the most impressive stats I can ever think of. And he's he'll do it anywhere. He'll take you down, ground pound you like that, um, go for submissions, crap like that. Or, you know, he'll keep it on the feet and just jab your face to death. He doesn't care. He'll run around like that. He's that ruthless. And then, of course, you got Jake Shields, who hasn't dropped a fight in like seven years or something. Uh, wow. Uh, Jake Shields beat Carlos Condit and Yushin Okami in the same night. People have a difficulty just doing it in one night. This guy did it in... Um, beat one of those guys in one night. And this guy beats both of them in one night. Like, wow. Um, you know, Jake Shields' record speaks for itself. He'll beat anyone at 170. He'll beat anyone at 185. He'll beat 205ers at 185, as he's seen in Dan Henderson bout. People rolled him off there. Dan Henderson, you know, of course, blitzed him in round one. And then, you know, Jake Shields kind of took over for the next four. Like, Jake Shields, I think, is a special, special mixed martial artist. For him to do what he does is quite unbelievable. He has this nice, low double leg takedown. Um, and if you don't exactly entirely stuff it, he'll still hold on to you like glue, and eventually you'll somehow fall. And then that's where he works his BJJ magic on you. 
or you know he just smothers you for five rounds as Dan Henderson found out um, GSP has the athletic ability and the wrestling ability like the wrestling knowledge and know-how to be able to stuff Jake Shields takedowns or even just completely avoid him GSP is the quicker of the two he is probably the stronger of the two although Jake Shields of course is that has fought at 185 and all um, I just think conditioning wise and physically GSP is the you know more uh, he, he has a lot more to work with Jake Shields his style you know isn't the most athletic guy isn't the strongest guy but uh, for some reason he's able to do what he does slight explosive takedown and some BJJ can go make you go very far in the sport and just look at Jake Shields but the thing is is that like I said um, GSP should be able to nullify the takedowns and that's really all Jake Shields has to offer GSP the thing is is that his striking is piss poor you know sure he doesn't get hit a lot considering he's usually on top of you trying to pound you out or trying to submit you but if this thing stays standing which GSP has the ability to do and just keep it standing Jake Shields should get finished, unlike Josh Koscheck did. For some reason, GSP didn't pull the trigger there and uh, go in for the kill because he was wary of Koscheck's power, I would assume. But he should be able to um, smother Jake Shields with a flurry of punches. And I don't think Jake Shields is going to have an answer if GSP does that. But I think GSP, for the most part, is going to keep it safe and keep a distance like he did against Josh Koscheck and just jab away at Jake Shields for five rounds nullifying Jake Shields takedowns whenever he throws one and I just think that this is this should be all GSP I got him winning 50-45 I do want Jake Shields to win I'll be pulling for him but at the same time if he does win I don't want him to get mauled by the Ontario audience so um I just don't see him winning at what whatsoever I'll be very happy if he does I'll be shocked actually I won't be shocked considering you know he's done this sort of thing before but uh, GSP is one of the pound for pound best, and to even win a round off um, him, I think would be, you know, you know, it would be like, wow, you actually won a round off GSP. This guy can't, doesn't even lose a round. You know what I'm saying? I just want Jake Shields to win one round, <laughs> but I just still don't think it's gonna happen. I think this should be all St. Pierre, and I got him winning via punches over the course of five rounds, 50-45, unanimous decision on George Rush St. Pierre. All right, y'all, now that about does it for my picks. Of course, you'll see my preliminary card picks somewhere on the screen, so check that out. Of course, comment on them if you feel like you need to. Of course, comment on the picks I explained via the main card. So, yeah, just tell me what you guys think. Tell me who you guys think is going to win. And, of course, tell me if you are going to the event. UFC 129, St. Pierre versus Shields at the Rogers Center. It should be a good time. I really can't wait. And, of course that's about it guys follow me on twitter like i stated earlier and of course my other social networking sites but that about does it for me it's cs i'm out thank you very much folks subscribe if you like what you see and see ya